Chapter 22 The burden of the valley of vision, what aileth thee now, that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops? Thou that art full of stirs, a tumultuous city, a joyous city, thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All thy rulers are fled together, they are bound by the archers, all that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled from far. Therefore, said I, look away from me, I will weep bitterly, labor not to comfort me, because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and of treading down of and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. And Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kerr uncovered the shield. And it shall come to pass that thy choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. And he discovered the covering of Judah, and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. Ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David, that they are many, and ye gathered together the waters of the lower pool. And ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. Ye have made a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning, and to baldness, and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Get ye, get thee unto this treasurer, even unto Shebna, which is over the house, and say, What hast thou, and whom hast thou here, thou, that thou hast hewed thee out a sepulchre here, as he that heweth him out a sepulchre on high, and that graveneth an habitation for himself in a rock. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity, and will surely cover thee. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of the Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station, and from thy state, and shall pull thee down. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe, and strengthen him with thy girdle, and I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for our, our glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cups even to all even to all the vessels of flagons. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed, and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, for the Lord has spoken it. Here we have again huge amount more imagery. The Valley of Vision would have been the area around Jerusalem. We're there in that, uh, as chapter 22, verse 9. That was Isaiah's home. That's a place where he received most of his visions. Uh, one of the things that he needed to do in this chapter was, although it was necessary for the enemies of Israel to know that they would not go unpunished by telling them all the burdens which he had done in the previous chapters, he now returned to the theme that Israel and Judah were going to be judged, uh, particularly Jerusalem, because Jerusalem had become a wicked part of a very wicked world and was no better than any of the others. Verses 12 to 13 were called uh, to people to be sorrow and, and mournful. Um, the reference to baldness doesn't mean natural baldness. It doesn't mean having a bald spot or thinning hair. What it means is, in times of extreme stress, great national tragedy, great personal problems, people would shave their hair, men would shave their hair usually, and if, it, if somebody, if your hair was shaved as part of a legal judgment against you, that was great shame, personally. And so what he's trying to get across here was that Judah uh, 
when they saw that there was, you know, that there was, their doom was coming, instead of putting on sackcloth and, sackcloth and ashes and going into deep repentance, which was the only hope they had of avoiding any of this judgment, they decided they were going to have a party, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. And, you know, they had no faith in God. No faith whatsoever. I mean, there was, there was a time when there was an army that was camped against Israel. And the king went to God the night before this army was going to attack. And the angel of the Lord killed over 180,000 men of this army the, that night. And the army just, whatever was left of the army, just packed up and left. You know, I'd, I'd rather have somebody like that fighting for me than, than the eat, drink, and be merry idiocy. Uh, in verses 15 to 25, we have uh, some dealings of a person named Shebna, who was a high official in the royal court, and who was also a morally corrupt and wicked individual, who had built himself a sepulcher high up in the mountains, I think, someplace, where he figured that it, when he died, he, his bones would be laid in the sepulcher, and he'd invested apparently a great amount in making sure this was nice. Like, excuse me, it is your life that is supposed to be righteous, not your grave that is supposed to be grandiose, because putting wicked bones in, in a really nice sepulcher isn't going to do you anything for eternity. Uh, this guy never thought of it that way, I guess. And so the Lord tells him he's going to die a long ways away from that sepulcher. His bones are not going to be in it. But at the same time, as he's telling us that, he's telling us about a man named Eliakim, who is going to be anointed to take Shebna's place. And the interesting thing is that, I mean, it's a powerful description of what this guy is going to be able to do, and probably very accurate as to what his authority is. Eliakim, however, in Hebrew means some very interesting things. It means either, depending on your translation skills, the resurrection of the Lord, or my God, he shall arise. And the description of Eliakim's responsibility and authority could be his, but it could also very powerfully describe what Jesus Christ was going to be able to do. Uh, if you have the time, compare back to Genesis 49 and 10 and uh, read there and just sort of see Israel, the man Israel, his blessing on Judah and how it talks about the scepter will never fall and there will always be somebody in his line, etc., etc. And that is both Eliakim and Jesus Christ. Now, when we come to really the crux of the matter here at the end, and that is the nail in the sure place. When the Savior was crucified, uh, most of the paintings that you would see that were done in the Middle Ages or e even some later show him being nailed through the palm of his hand. That isn't what happened. He was nailed through the wrist. And the reason is that the, the, there is no sure place to nail in the palm of the hand because the weight of a body will tear the flesh. But if you nail between the, in the wrist, between the large bones, that will carry an awful lot of weight. That is the nail in the sure place. Now, this reference here is to the crucifixion. Now, there's an, a reference to this, and I want you to understand what it means. Our belief in Christ and our obedience to the commandments of God is a type of nailing us in a sure place, nailing us to a secure presence, secure companionship with God through Christ, who was nailed in a secure place to the cross. Beautiful imagery.